Hello, good afternoon, y'all. Happy Saturday. Happy, happy Saturday. How y'all doing? It's your girl, Sharita, the Behavior and Learning Strategist, coming at you from the Work on Limited Growth Institute, where you can find solutions for your child's behavior and learning challenges. I got a good one for y'all today. I'm passionate about this one. I know I say that about everything, but this one, I really am very passionate, okay? <laughs> Very passionate. So what do you do if your child has a, does not have a permanent teacher this year? I know a bunch of you are in this situation. And I'm in this situation myself, okay? <laughs> My youngest daughter does not have a permanent teacher this year. Uh, her teacher, when I'm attorney leaving, is going to be gone until March, okay? So luckily, Maya is ahead. She's advanced. So I don't have any danger, there's no danger of her falling behind and not meeting, you know, first grade requirements because she's in first grade, but she's reading grades level above fourth grade. She's reading fourth grade level material and her math is really good. She's advanced. Okay. So I don't have that concern, but if, if you do have a situation where your classroom, the classroom that your child has been assigned to does not have a permanent teacher, has a substitute teacher, there are some things that you can do so your child doesn't fall behind or because of the difference in structure, sometimes there may be a lack of structure, uh, there may be so many problems, behavior problems that come about in the classroom that affect learning. And then that will affect your child's overall learning experience. It's, it's almost like, you know, in the pandemic when uh, kids, we're learning from home on the computers and it wasn't the best learning experience for them it's kind of like that almost the same okay uh when you have a teacher that has te years of teaching and has been teaching the same grade year after year sometimes they switch grades uh but she has years of teaching or he has years of teaching uh, that your child will have a much better chance of having a successful year than when, if you had a substitute teacher who has not been teaching for a, uh, a certain number of years. They move from school to school um, and they don't have the the uh, knowledge, the, the experience, you know, um, to teach uh, in the best way, okay? Now, I'm not saying this to not substitute teachers because I was in that position. First, I was a mental health specialist, okay? And I worked to improve uh, uh, kids that, that came to our program. Uh, behavior, we did behavior modification and social skills, okay? That was my job as a, as a mental health uh, specialist. Then I went into teaching, and I was a substitute teacher traveling. That's like a traveling teacher. You know what I'm saying? Traveling from school to school, waiting for a phone call. But I'm going to tell you what school you're going to be at that day. <laughs> That's how my life was. I was going from school to school. Um, uh, cause I left, uh, I was a mental health specialist, but I, but I left cause I just had my oldest daughter Jazzy and I wanted to be home more to take care of her. Okay. So when you're doing that, that's not a lot of stability for a substitute teacher, first of all. And then when you go into the school, the kids have to get to know you. They have to learn how to interact with you. A lot of times they be trying to get over. A lot of craziness happens when there's a substitute teacher in the classroom for the day. Your child may get into more trouble. The whole class may get into trouble. There's confusion uh, when a substitute teacher is, is, is looking at the the syllabus or the teacher is teaching uh, in her notes and she tries to teach it and the kids are saying, we did that already. Sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true, okay? <laughs> they try to test the substitute teacher to see how far they can go, you know? They try to, to, to just act up and not do what they need to do because their regular teacher is not there. So I'm not trying to... There's no shade to substitute teachers. We just want to make sure that our children have the best experience. We want to create an experience where our children still grow during the year and can do their best. But also the substitute teacher gets the support and our children are not in the class with the substitute teacher acting a fool and causing disruption, right? <laughs> That's basically what we're looking for, all right? 
So I was a substitute teacher and then I became a certified teacher, certified special education teacher. And I was a resource pullout teacher, okay? Uh, in North New Jersey. So um, that's my hometown, y'all. Brick City represent. So at first, I was a, a, a substitute teacher, um, a permanent substitute teacher for a special education class. And my students had severe behavior uh, problems, but they also uh, were reading well below grade level and they were failing and they were running out of the room and, and fighting and, and throwing things in the classroom and cursing and not doing what they're supposed to do, not doing classwork, not doing homework, you know. And um, since I had a background as a mental health specialist with behavior, I implemented behavior modification system in the classroom and I taught my students behaviorally and academically. So we improved behavior, improved focus, improved uh, reading, improve um math improve grades overall they all had goals that they accomplished every market period right so that's that's the experience that i had there and then i went to teach as a substitute teacher still a uh, kindergarten classroom the teacher was out on maternity leave so i wasn't there that long okay uh and then i became a, a certified resource uh teach special education teacher finally had my own class officially as an official teacher and that was amazing, okay? So I have experienced y'all in this area, okay? As a substitute teacher with kids trying to get over, you gotta work so hard to teach a class when the teacher's not there for a while. And also as a mom, when your child's teacher is, is not there, you know, out on maternity leave or for whatever reason, your child doesn't have a teacher there. The attendance of the teacher, my first daughter, the teacher was sick, so she was absent a lot, right? So, building on that experience, and then building on my, my, as a mom, also my experience as a substitute teacher, also is my experience as a teacher, <laughs> right? Um, and wanting my students to be respectful to the substitute teacher, also wanting the, my classroom to not be tore up when I got back the next day, okay? I was serious about that. Wanting my students to still learn if, if for any reason I had to not be uh at work that day i wanted them to still learn i wanted them to still follow directions i wanted them to still be respectful i wanted them to still do their work i wanted them to uh behave like leaders in the classroom i wanted a good report from the substitute teacher okay so without further ado after i told you a little bit about myself and why i'm discussing this topic today um we're gonna get it going right now i want y'all to let me know um, how you feel about uh, this situation if your child doesn't have a permanent teacher uh, and what experience you've had with, with substitute teacher um, days. I'm going to call them substitute teacher days. Days where your child had a substitute that day. Now you're getting all kind of calls or your child getting in trouble or they come home and they don't have homework or they left it at school. You know, all kind of nonsense. <laughs> Let me know how you feel. All right, let's do it. So, uh, first of all, um, what we should do, let's, let's do a plan, okay? For if there's, your child does not have a permanent teacher for the school year. Number one, understand that if your child is not going to have a substitute teacher, basically, it's maintenance, okay? It's maintenance in that classroom. The, the substitute teacher is trying to survive for the year, waiting for the uh, the if it, in my case i was the teacher the whole year and i just decided to just be a teacher for that class but some substitute teachers go in and they're trying to hang on until the teacher that's supposed to be in there comes back right from attorney leave or they're trying to hang on to the end of the school year okay all right they don't have access to everything that the other teachers have like my um my child's teacher was telling me, a uh, substitute teacher was saying that she does not have access to the dojo. It's not working. They're still trying to get it together. She told the office, she told the IT, you know, department, it's still not together. You understand? It's all these complications here, okay? <laughs> so understand that it's maintenance. She's just trying to survive to the end of the school year. And your child is not going to be, for the most part, pushed and challenged 
um, because it's really general, just trying to make sure that they, they teach what they're supposed to teach and make sure that the, the kids behave, okay, every single day, number one. So if you want more than that, what you need to do is get in there early, quick, and build a relationship with the substitute teacher. This is what I did, okay? So get the substitute teacher's email and a, an a, a email address and schedule monthly updates, okay? This is what I did. Uh, I wish when my, my oldest daughter was younger, I knew to do this. I didn't, I didn't do this. I just was upset every day and I just complained that her teacher was absent. Every time she got in the car and told me her teacher wasn't there that day, I was just so upset. But I didn't uh, reach out to the teacher. I didn't exchange email addresses. I didn't understand, you know, get to know what was going on because she was sick. I didn't get to know what was going on and I didn't realize what I could have been doing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Um, to make sure that my child was still got what they needed and support and work together with the teacher. Okay? So get the substitute teacher's email address and schedule monthly updates. The checklist uh, will be posted uh, so you guys can follow along. Okay? Uh, during these monthly updates, you should have goals that you want your child to concentrate on and the substitute teacher will identify a goal too, a couple of goals based on what they are seeing in the classroom that they want your child to improve on. So when you communicate and you know that every month you want to look and see how your child is doing, where the progress was, plus you have email so your substitute teacher can email you, you can email the substitute teacher, you know, back and forth then that gives your child what we call accountability. So they're not going to go to school and show out and then come home and tell you whatever they want to tell you. And you only have half the story. You know how our kids do, right? Because you're going to be emailing each other, okay? So build that communication and also schedule monthly updates so that there could be some kind of focus and structure and it can be very goal centered so you're accomplishing something all right number two create a re review workbook with homework so my daughter still gets sent home and she has math homework every day that's the only homework i've been seeing i haven't seen anything as far as literacy or science or social studies anything like that it's been math every every single day so i have tons of worksheets so what i did was i took them and um, staple them together. <laughs> it's now a workbook. <laughs> so it's a review workbook so that she can do when she has independent study time. She can go through and practice and complete the math workbook or make things better. Things that I look for, uh, you know, with math, it's very easy to not care about. If you have a, an open-ended question that you have to answer, it's very uh, easy to just write one word and just keep it moving or not care about your spelling or not care about um, making sure it's a complete sentence. So I make sure that Maya um, uh, writes a complete sentence and thoroughly answers the question, okay? So this is her reviewing. Every time we check her homework after she finishes and she presents it to me, I make sure that we cross all the T's and dot and we dot all the I's. And then when it's time for her to review, She's practicing those problems on another sheet of paper uh, and mastering them, okay? This will keep her ahead of the game. It's not just work to send home that she has to do and give back. This is study material is what I'm trying to say, okay? So any homework you do get uh, sent home, uh, keep it, staple it together, and have your child work through it and review it, okay? Uh, and then uh, the next thing is um, send a behavior chart to school to be completed on a daily basis. This also is a, um, this is also accountability. So when you send a behavior chart in, a substitute teacher can give your child some kind of score and also can write comments. And then they send it home and then you write, write down your comments and what you did to address it, right? If there was an issue, and then your child sends it back every day. Your child is carrying their accountability to and from the school. One of my students in my program has that going on. 
Um, so the teacher sends home the um, behavior chart and then she takes a picture of it and she emails it to me and then I address whatever the issues were in our program during class. So this is very good as far as accountability. And this is good at helping my student because he liked to leave out pertinent information or uh, <laughs> say, you know, say things that didn't quite actually happen. All right. <laughs> right. In class. And, and I'm like, it's right here. It's written. <laughs> like, you know, so I know that what actually happened. Right. So he's starting to do better at what, what what I teach him, take responsibility for his actions. He's starting to do better at that, okay? All right, so the next one is create a behavior and learning program at home. Create a behavior and learning program at home. I always say that our kids need two teachers or two schools. They Learning does not stop at the school. And at home, it could be very, very specialist because as a kid, they have... They play, they create, they have a great time, but they also are constantly learning. They don't stop learning when they leave the school. They're learning still when they come to your house, whether you have learning materials available for them or review workbooks available for them or assignments or writing or anything that, that you want them to learn. Whether you have that or not, they're still learning. And it's like, what do you want them to learn? When they come home, if they want to just be on their phone and be on their game, is if you had a choice, is that the kind of learning you want your child to to have for the day? Is that growing them? Are they addressing areas uh, where they are struggling uh, academically? Are they addressing it? Is it customized for them or is it just something they like to do? If it's just something they like to do and it's taking up a lot of their time, that needs to be replaced with whatever you think they need to work on you and the teacher together. It needs to be replaced with that. And they can have fun time still. They can have fun time. They can have relaxing time. They can have uh, creative time. They can, you know, play. They can do all that stuff. But uh, they will always be learning. They're always looking around, thinking, being curious about things, and learning. So let's just be intentional about what our children are learning by creating uh, a learning program uh, from home, behavior and learning program. Now, why do I say behavior and learning program? Does your child remain seated when they when it's time to do work? Do, does your child stay focused on the task? Does your child follow directions the first time? Does your child get ready and prepared for work uh, on their own? Does your child uh, uh, work independently or do they keep calling you, right? Um, and, and waiting for you to come and sit down with them. Okay. Are these the same behaviors that your child had? You know, do they have the same behaviors in the classroom, right? Hi, Ernst. Welcome. Welcome. If, if your child has the same behavior that, uh, these same behaviors in the classroom, then the behavior and learning program at home should address these. They should be working on this every single day. Just like for sitting, if your child has trouble sitting, they should be practicing how to sit when they're at home, okay? All the time. When it's time to eat dinner, sit right. That's what I tell my youngest daughter. Sit back against the chair, feet in front of you. You know, sitting with one leg out, hanging out, and you know, next thing you know, food is on the floor. So a behavior and learning program means address any behaviors that are getting in the way with your child's uh academic success and growth right uh get in the way of your child's academic success and growth and and also any behaviors that may be disruptive in a classroom the structure has to be there so you implement that then you implement a learning program this is everything that your child should know that they don't know you implement that too you set it up so that they get some coaching from you but then they can also do it independently you must have this in place if your child does not have a permanent teacher and they have a substitute teacher every day because it's very easy for your child to fall behind with a year like that ahead of them, okay? So, so far we got uh, get the substitute teachers or so I'm going to go back to the beginning so uh, um, you can catch up real quick. Get the substitute teacher's email address and schedule monthly updates. Build a relationship with the substitute teacher and continue that. That's good for your child's accountability. And it, your substitute, the substitute teacher will look out for your child amongst all the students there. You want your child to pay, get paid attention to? Uh, 
build a relationship with your child substitute teacher. Number two, create a review work workbook with homework sheets. Any homework sheets that sent home, that's study material. Staple them all together. Have your child create a cover for it, decorate the cover, and staple it together. It's now a book, and they practice and study from it every single day. Number three, send a behavior chart to school to be completed on a daily basis so that your child knows that whatever they do in school, your, your, te your child's teacher will know and you will know and they will be held accountable, okay? Number four, create a behavior and learning program at home. We just discussed that. Now for the last one, and then I have a bonus for you. Have your child recite the substitute teacher rules every day. Substitute teacher classroom rules. Have them recite them every day before they go to school, every night before they go to bed. Uh, and I'm going to tell you what those are, okay? That's the bonus, y'all. That's the bonus. Uh, a lot of classrooms all around the country, uh, they have rules up on the wall, but the kids don't recite them. They don't know them. They must know them. My students recite them all the time, honey. When they come from my tutoring program, uh, classes, coaching sessions, they always have to recite them. You know, sometimes I have them write them down. Uh, we did a <laughs> we did a little competition with them the other day where each student, I would call them and say, all right, your turn. And I use my daughter's name. Maya, you're up. All right, because she's in my program too. Uh, what are the What are the five things you have to do to earn your points? So then Maya is trying to remember them. And she has five chances because there are five things she have to do this for the for the points criteria. She has five chances, but she gets a point for each one. So she can mention a couple of things, but if they're not accurate, then I'll just keep counting down. And I say, you got two more chances. You got three right, but you have two more chances, okay? And then she finishes. I'm like, oh, good. You got three. All right. Next time, you got to beat three. You got to get more than three. Okay, and keep going till you get five. Next one. Then I call the next one. RC, how many can you remember? And then she starts and she gets the three. I'm like, oh, you got she got three. Can she get four? Right? So this is just a little competition, a little exercise that we did the other day so that they can remember what they are focusing on behaviorally in the classroom. What am I supposed to do? It's a guide. And they should be thinking about this all the time. Uh, that's being proactive. We have to really work on our kids' mindsets. And we have to teach them how to be great students. And the, the way we do that is for them to be thinking all the time of what they're supposed to be doing. If they do something that they're not supposed to do, and then we tell them that they shouldn't be doing it after the fact, that's not as proactive or effective. Even if they heard the rules before, they wasn't thinking about it beforehand. So when I was teaching in the classroom, I had my students recite the rules every day. Someone's job was to, to lead the class. They would get the pointer, stand in front of the class, and lead the class in reciting the rules before we started the day. Because I wanted everyone thinking about how to be a successful student. What's, what do they need to focus on behaviorally to, get the, to have the best day possible? So this is what you do with your child. And then if they are not following the rules, you can go back and say, what are the substitute teacher classroom rules? Did you do that? Did you do this? What are you going to do tomorrow? It's a simple guide for them to think about and focus on all the time. My question is, are y'all ready for me to give them to you? Hey, <laughs> I'm so excited about this. All right. Number one. Oh, this is so important. This is so important, y'all. Number one, have them write them down, hang them up. Always speak and act in a respectful manner. Some of our kids are walking around here thinking that they can be disrespectful to the substitute teacher. They don't have to listen to the substitute teacher because, A, then you're not my, my real teacher, right? Uh, B, they think they're not going to be held accountable, okay? And C, if they go home and tell you about something that happened and criticize the substitute teacher, they think that you're going to defend them. I hope they're not doing that, all right? 
always learn both sides. I made that mistake before when I, my first time being a mother. Always learn both sides before you make a decision or react, okay? So we have to send them into class thinking and knowing and with the expectation that they speak and act in a respectful manner to the substitute teacher that day. That is your job. That is my expectation. And I need you to do that. Okay? That's number one. Number two, be a leader in the classroom. What does a leader do? A leader is always following directions, always following direction. A leader is always doing their work. A leader uh, is always, when they finish their work, they check it before they turn it in, right? Uh, a leader is respectful, you know what I mean? You're an example to the rest of the class. So be a leader in the classroom. That's number two. Number three, oh, this is almost as important as the first one. Oh my gosh. This right here is a thorn in the side of many substitute teachers around the whole country and many teachers, permanent teachers. <laughs> Stay in your seat where you think you're going. No getting out of your seat without permission. No falling out of your chair and rolling on the floor. Okay? <laughs> no dropping your pencil a hundred times and it's rolling under the desk of the student next to you. Now you got to get out of your seat and then dive under the desk of the next student to retrieve your pencil and get back in your seat. None of that nonsense. Let's cut it out. So before they go to school, I'm telling you, because I've been teaching for years, <laughs> I know all the tricks that kids, that kids do, okay? And then sometimes they... they they act like they can't sit in their seat and then they fall out of their chair and do all this stuff just so that you can pay attention to them and they can interrupt the class and the teacher has to keep talking to them and then all that stuff. So before they go into school, playing around with their seat and not sitting, right? You have to make them say it. That's a rule. That's a substitute teacher classroom rule. That's a rule anyway, but we focus on substitute teachers today. Stay in your seat do not get out of your seat without permission it's very important for, to, for the classroom and for the substitute teacher that there is structure during the day and if the substitute teacher is busy telling everybody to sit back down then that means less learning time for your for your children okay so they have to stay in their seat okay that's very 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 important number three is oh no that was number three number four you know how we always say follow directions well i i had to say and this is this is what my i don't really need to say that now when i teach the way that i teach uh in my students uh is is really structured so they know they're not talking when it's time to do work if they have a question they have to finish their work first okay um and then they have to raise their hands right it's virtual but they have to raise their hands and then you have to wait till i get to you don't interrupt me when i'm talking to another student and i always say and i don't want you doing that in the classroom either okay so this is not an issue uh in my class now but when i was teaching and i was first teaching i had to teach them to wait for and follow directions because kids are impulsive naturally okay they they think something they want to do it uh, if I start teaching or if I'm getting ready to do a, a, a group activity and um, everybody's going to be able to do a certain part of the activity. Like I remember one day I decided to bake cookies, chocolate chip cookies with my students. This is when I was a mental health specialist working at UMD and J in Newark. Uh, and we had access to the oven, right? So I was going to bake chocolate chip cookies. They're all excited. They all want to touch the dough. They all want to touch the cookies. Uh, they all want to touch the flour. They're, I want to be the one to measure. I want to be the one. Wait for direction. That means everybody stand. You're going to fold your hands like this and stand like this. And wait for me to tell you what you are assigned to do. And if I'm you're ready to tell people what they're assigned to do. And you yell out or you move or you touch something. You will get skipped. Because that means you're not ready. So teaching them. You must wait for directions. Don't. Be trying to run over the substitute teacher, telling the substitute teacher what you want to do 
what you think substitute teachers should be doing, what your teacher usually and always does, right? Because sometimes they be saying that and it's not true sometimes. And then sometimes they just be using that so they don't have to listen to the substitute teacher. No, you wait for the substitute teacher to tell you what you need to do, okay? So wait for and follow directions, all right? That's number four. Number five. This is a general rule, but we focus on substitute teacher today. Complete all your work early and check it before you turn it in. There are way too many kids who are in class not completing their assignments. And they get too much time. If you don't finish, you can finish it tomorrow. If you don't finish, you can finish it later for homework. We need to start teaching our children to complete their work in a specific amount of time because because that takes focus and that also improves their focus if they know they have to be done in a certain amount of time they're not taking breaks they're not looking around they're not getting distracted i always tell my students eyes on your paper and pencil moving i want your eyes on your paper if they're copying something or using something from the screen so that they can do their work eyes on the screen eyes on the paper pencil moving eyes on the screen eyes on the paper pencil moving eyes on the screen eyes on the paper because they have to just focus on that and if they just focus on what they're supposed to be focusing on for an amount of time, they will get their work done. So you don't want your child to be coming home with work that they were supposed to be finished in class for homework. Because there's a substitute teacher and it could keep running. And you don't want your child to, if the rest of the class is doing that, you don't want your child to be doing it too. Raise the standard and have your child go into school thinking and understanding with the expectation that when the teacher gives an assignment, they are to focus on it, give it 100%, get it done, check their work, and hand it in at the end of the period or whatever they're supposed to hand it in. That's their job. No playing around, no waiting, no letting it go until later or, or after school and all that other stuff. None of that, okay? <laughs> None of that. Get it done, all right? <laughs> Get it done early. I tell my daughter and I tell my students, my high school students, uh, beat the due date. So if your teacher tells you that uh, an assignment is due on Friday, your due date is Wednesday. Get it done. That way you have time to check it, to make it better, make sure it's, you've done your best job and send it in. But what's happening is uh, they get in the due date on Friday and then it's past Friday, but the teacher is still accepted. So they lag in it. They're not really focusing on it. It's not a priority. No, get your work done early, check it and turn it in. All right. Now I'm about to tell you the last one, which I think is so sweet. That's the sweet one. The rest are tough. Okay, <laughs> because my students, uh, they know I'm tough on them, but I love them. Okay, no nonsense. All right. Uh, and they need that so that they can get more structure and get serious about things. But they know I love them too. Now, the first, let's go through the, the rules again really quickly. Number one, always speak and act in a respectful manner. These are the substitute teacher classroom rules. If you have, if your child has a substitute teacher, even for one day, um, this applies, but it's just, if it's going to be for months, honey, or until the end of the year, you got to get this in gear right now because all kinds of nonsense and reindeer games can happen between now and the end of the school year because your child is not taking their education seriously because they have a substitute teacher and their permanent teacher is not there. Okay. All right. So number one, always speak in a respectful, speak and act in a respectful manner. Number two, be a leader in the classroom. That's right, baby. Be a leader. Don't be following behind people or waiting around, right? Be a leader. All right. Number three, stay in your seat. But they will say, stay in my seat. Have them recite these every day in the morning and at night. Number four, wait for and follow directions. Number five, complete all my schoolwork early and check it. And number six, <laughs> say thank you when it's time to go home. Say thank you. Welcome to your substitute teacher and say thank you. And, and my youngest students, 
learn this. And my older students learn. They, they say thank you and bye. Have a good day before they log out. Have a good weekend, Miss Sharita, before they log out. Have them show gratitude because that's still a person. That's somebody's mother, father, you know what I mean? Or, or a daughter, you know what I mean? Or a son, right? That's somebody's husband or wife or partner. Have them. That's a person and that's an adult. You show respect. No matter what, they still came to work. They still worked hard and they kept you safe while I was at work. Or they kept you safe while I was at home. You know what I'm saying? They kept you safe. They taught you that day. Appreciate it. Say thank you. Okay? When it's time to go home every day, say thank you. And, and you see them tomorrow. And then you leave. Alright? So, you implement this now. Your child is going to have a much better school year if they go in there with the right mindset. And if they come home... And they didn't have a good day. They wasn't listening. Substitute teacher had to write a, a bad report on a behavior chart. Uh, they would use, use these rules, okay, substitute teacher rules, as a guide for your child to take responsibility for their behavior and be accountable. Have them write these rules down because obviously you need a reminder, honey, okay? <laughs> this is what you're supposed to be doing. And this is what I expect you to do the next day. When they come home, you got to ask them, how was your day? They tell me about your day. Did you follow all the substitute teacher classroom rules? Okay. And, and tell me how. All right? Talk to them. Have these conversations so that your child can have the best uh, school year they could possibly have, even if they don't have a permanent teacher for the year. All right? Y'all got this. Oh, man. I was so excited to talk to y'all about this because... I know what it's like being a mom at home and your child is going to school and they have they don't their their teacher is not there and you're concerned. I know how that feels. Also know how it feels to be the substitute teacher <laughs> and the kids come in like, Woohoo, the teacher is a substitute today. I'm gonna lose my mind up in here, up in here. And I'm like, no, no, sit you behind down, ain't going down like that, all right? And you have to work really hard for them to understand that this is not a substitute teacher day. All right? I'm your teacher for the day. And you want to follow rules and follow directions. And I'm here to teach you. You're here to learn. Man, I had to work really hard. Okay? So I understand what it is to be a substitute teacher. Also stay, understand what it is to be a teacher. And that's your classroom. You set it up with love and with care. My phone is about to go off, I think. You set it off with you set it up with love and care. You are responsible for teaching your students. You want them to have the best school year, but you have to be out for whatever reason. And you want your students to be okay. You want them to learn. You want them to still grow. And you do not want to come back to the classroom in shambles. You know how they be tearing the class up? They don't tell you about that. They be tearing the class up uh, when the substitute when the substitute teacher go uh, when your teacher is out. And the teacher has to come back, and the class is just tore up. And and it's like coming to your house, and the kids tore up the house. And as soon as you get in there, you're like, uh-uh, pick this up, put it back over here, clean this up, clean this living room up, right? That's the, that's the, the substitute teacher, the teacher's classroom, that's, their, that's like their second home, honey, all right? So I know what it's like to be in all these different situations. And in the end, our children they would always do better when they behave better. They always learn more when they behave better. And they always grow and learn more when they have a mindset for success. And we have to equip them and train them for these different situations. Not just send them to school, expect them to do what they're supposed to do and, and expect the school year to go the best or just expect for everything to fall apart because it's a substitute teacher. Let's get in there. Let's be hands-on. Let's be proactive and make sure we train our children for these different situations so that they can still be their best and adapt, okay? All right? And, and one more thing. I, I talked to my, my daughter's teacher before she went on maternity leave. It was at the end of the to, uh, of the days, and she was telling me that she was in pain, and she looked tired, and I'm like, you need to take care of yourself, because I know what that's like. Being, I was expecting my first child when I was a mental health specialist, and honey, when you get to the end, 
and it's almost time for you to have your baby, you be like, whoo! <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? So I told her that I would check in on the class from time to time and I'll volunteer. I asked the, the, you know, the school if I could come in and read to the class sometimes. You know what I'm saying? So if you have time to do that, uh, go ahead and volunteer and go in and, and read to the class. The students will love it. The substitute teacher will appreciate the break and the support, but also your child will see you there and know how serious their education still is. You took the time out to do that. They would love to see you there, but that's another layer of accountability. Listen, we want our children to be accountable all the time. And our children can find little spaces. <laughs> you know how the loopholes in the contract? Oh, our kids are so good at finding loopholes in what they're supposed to be doing. All right? So we want to seal up those loopholes as much as possible and really connect with our children. Let them know, hey, this is serious. You do your best. You always do your best. I'm watching you. I got you. But I'm watching you and you got this. All right? All right, I love y'all so much. I got a class coming in five minutes. It's my my early learning group, which used to be my youngest group. Uh, now I'm going to be teaching a three-year-old for the first time. And uh, I'm going to have another student coming in. And the student's just two years old, right? So I'm teaching um, uh, younger students than I used to teach. Um, uh, and that's very exciting. Got more to say to y'all about that, but I got to go, Okay. <laughs> So I'm going to go teach my babies. Um, if you're looking for a tutor and coach to help improve your child behavior, focus, and learning all at the same time, holla at your girl, honey. Not only do I teach uh, my students, uh, and it's a virtual learning experience, but I'm very hands-on. And I tell them, act like a, we're in, in a room together. I don't care about this computer, all right? <laughs> but they will improve their focus. They will improve their behavior. They will improve their learning. They will learn skills that they never mastered before that's holding them back. We're also now, this month, implementing a self-care um, section in our action plans. I always talk to moms about self-care, how they need to do that self-care, if you, especially if your child is having uh, trouble with behavior. Oh, we need that self-care. So I always talk to moms about that and I have dads in my program too. Um, talk to them and check in on them with their self-care. Now we're going to have a self-care section. So there'll be an action plan for self-care for our parents. And then also going to be implementing uh, a nutrition uh, section in the action plan as well. Because I'm well aware that when our kids are eating healthier, they're performing better. They, they, they feel better. They uh, can focus better. They, if they have problems with uh, being aggressive, uh, it helps with that as well. So it's going to be nutrition in there as well. Just overall, I mean, we're going to the top. We're already doing amazing in this program, but we are going to the top. Always looking for ways to improve. So if you're looking for that, holla at your girl. You can send me a message or go to my website, growthinstitute.mykajabi.com so you can roll your child into the Unlimited Growth Tutoring Coaching Program. That's the only tutoring coaching program where you, you can uh, get help with your child's behavior and their learning at the same time. I got you, all right? Love y'all so much. Believe in yourself, believe in your child, honey, and always remember that growth is unlimited. Peace.